Good morning and welcome to St. James's Episcopal Church on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read from Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16, responsively by half verse, on page 720 in the Book of Common Prayer and in your bulletin.
Because you have made the Lord your refuge. There shall be no evil happen to you. For he shall give his angels charge over you. They shall bear you in their hands. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver him. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. With long life will I satisfy him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. 
but it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Parker Palmer is an educator and author. He's an elder in the Quaker tradition. In his book, Let Your Life Speak, he tells of the time that he was offered the position of president of a small educational institution. He wanted the job, and he thought he should take it. Nevertheless, given his Quaker tradition, he assembled a clearness committee of a half dozen trusted friends from the community. Their job wasn't to give advice, but to ask honest, open-ended questions in order to help him discern God's vocational call in his life. One of the friends asked Parker what he would like most about being president. He mentioned several things he wouldn't enjoy, like wearing a tie every day or attending long meetings at which his friend pointed out that he wasn't answering the question. Parker paused, and he thought a bit, and then in a small voice, he told them, I guess what I'd like most is getting my picture in the paper with my name under it. Now, Parker was sitting with seasoned Quakers, and they knew that his answer was laughable, even ridiculous. Yet they didn't laugh at all, but they went into a long and serious silence. Quakers do this when they are listening for God's direction in their lives. In the silence, Parker could only sweat and inwardly groan as he waited. Finally, the questioner broke the silence with a question that made everyone laugh. Parker, he said, can you think of an easier way to get your picture in the paper? <laughs> it was in that moment that he realized that his desire to be president had much more to do with his ego than with the vocation of his life. The Clearness Committee had made things clear, and he withdrew his name from the search. Parker Palmer isn't alone. He's just maybe more honest than most of us, and maybe more in touch with his true self, because we are no less prone to feeding our egos. Indeed, this grab for glory goes all the way back to the gospel that we just heard. James and John, the Zebedee brothers, have been following Jesus since the beginning. Known as the sons of thunder, they were strong personalities. And they were ready for their leader to take control of things because they knew that when this happened, they would be sitting pretty. They would rock it to fame and fortune along with Jesus the Messiah when he came into his glory. 
But Jesus sees that they still do not understand, even though he's told them three times by this point that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer and die on a cross and then be raised from the dead. They are unable to hear him. They are so focused on their own glory that they are unable to comprehend the very glory of God standing there talking to them. They are so focused, they are so focused on the wrong thing. They cannot comprehend. Discipleship or following Jesus is no easy thing. But here Jesus tells us exactly how to be disciples, beginning with what discipleship is not. It is not about asking Jesus for what we selfishly want. It is not about attaining a place of glory or fame or wealth or power. What discipleship is about is drinking from the cup and living out our baptismal vows. For us, this means being part of a community of faith, resisting evil, proclaiming the gospel, serving Christ, loving our neighbors, and striving for justice and peace and dignity for everyone. And there will be times when following Jesus as disciples may mean suffering and even death. Rather than chasing after glory for ourselves, disciples give the glory and honor to others and thereby to God. Greatness comes through our service to others, and it comes when we are doers of the word, not merely hearers. That is what we are known for here at St. James, being doers. Jesus might remind us, though, that it's not enough to want to be known as a place where we are doers. Jesus is calling us beyond that to actually doing things that reveal God's glory. This will look differently for each of us. It may look like giving financially or serving in a worship ministry. It may look like supporting the Children's Center or volunteering at the Pace Center or the Circle Center. It may look like getting to know neighbors in need close by and far away, such as at the Real Life Picnic or in Hurley or in Navajo Land. Each week, there are invitations in the bulletin and in the chimes emails for us to practice discipleship. Invitations to say yes to God. Invitations to be disciples. As we move into a season of more intentional times of silence in our prayers of the people, may we listen for how God might be offering us some clarity, calling us to humility, calling us to listen more deeply to the needs of others, calling us to be doers of the Word. Parker Palmer said, humility is the only lens through which great things can be seen. And once we have seen them, Humility is the only possible posture. May we have the grace to serve others that we might see the true glory of God.
Standing, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, in the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of the one being of the Father, through him. Prayers of the People can be found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Please stand or kneel as you are able. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark and Gail, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, and especially for those who have asked for our prayers, including Jeannie, Jeannie John, John and Luella, Ina, Ed, Dave, Billy, Lamonkey, Adele, Allie and Bill, Courtney, Lily, Nancy, Susan, Jan, Pratt, Janet, Mark, Virginia, Elizabeth, and the family, Beryl, Charles, Betty, Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life.
we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Bill O'Connor, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. again and welcome to all of you who remain behind here in Richmond while the rest of our folks are up at Shrine Mont. I was up there yesterday. It's a beautiful day. People are having fun and doing all the wonderful things. So we pray for all of them for safe travels on their way today. Um, after this service, we ask that you uh, join us next door because Robin is going to give us her story, who she is and how she came to be here and all those sorts of things. And so we'd love for you to join us over there after this service. Um, on Friday night, we have an organ recital, Dr. Robert Gallagher. At, he's um, the music director over at River Road Baptist Church, and he is a wonderful organist, so I hope that you can come to that. We also have um, the listening sessions coming up. These are after the Holy Cow survey. We had some more information we'd like to get from you um, regarding what you said and what you told us. And so um, please do register for those. We need to know how many are coming so that we have the right number of tables and facilitators and, and all of that stuff. So the registration closes tomorrow. There's a, 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 a session on Wednesday night after supper at 7, and then two sessions on Sunday at either 10 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon. And you only come to one. Saturday. What did I say? Sunday again? I keep saying that. Saturday um, at 10 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon. And you only come to one. They're all going to be the same. So let us know which one you would like to come to. And if you're coming on Wednesday, at, let us know if you're going to stay for dinner because we make sure we have enough food as well. So I hope that you will join us for those conversations. There's all these things in the bulletin. As Robin said, there's always an opportunity for you to be a doer of the word. It's always in our bulletin every week. So um, leave all of that to you to decide what it is that you are able to join us to do. Again, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
We continue in our worship with Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By thy will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you. Joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them to be your holy, by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said to him, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your work at hand in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. 
Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Resist the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body of your of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us these holy ministries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal And now, Father, send us out to do the work the love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him and to you, the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.